Hello, and welcome to the introduction to Site Designer. I'm going to show you around the app and give you um, a general understanding of how the program works so that you can make the most out of all of its tools and features. I'm going to start by discussing the three main um, side panels. That's the content pane, the styles pane, and the element pane. The content pane is divided into three sections. We have the, the uh, elements section, which contains all of, the, um, all of the content elements that you'll use for your project. The component section, which is pre-built um, customizable items. And the last section is for symbols, where you'll manage um, features on the site that are synced across your project. So under the content elements pane, this is where you'll find um, all of the different items to add to your project. Each one can be added just by dragging and dropping them right onto your page. Starting with this heading element, I'm going to drag and drop it to show you how easy that is. You can also click on an element and it will pop it right onto your canvas. Any element that has a little down arrow, such as this container element, indicates that there are additional options to choose from. If you click on it, um, the other options will appear so that you can um, select them and add them to your canvas. The next feature under the content component section is where you'll be able to manage um, any pre-built components in um, in your site. Pre-built components um, can be accessed uh, from the component library up in the top by clicking on the component toolbar icon. And you can choose from a wide range of items that have already been pre-configured. Just select the one you want to add them to your project and then customize. Any pre-built component that has been added to the project um, will appear here in this component panel. You can simply click on the plus green arrow to add that, com that specific component to the canvas. For example, I just added that button. The third section of the co content pane is for symbols. Symbols are um, elements within the project that are kept in sync, uh, such as your navigation header or your footer. They're indicated on the canvas by the orange um, outline. So in this case, the, um, the menu here, and you can see on the panel that it's going to appear on all of the following pages. And if you started a new page, you can insert that specific symbol into that new page. The second working pane is the styles pane. The styles pane is where you can adjust how the, a specific element looks on your canvas. So I'm first going to select that pre-built component I added, that button, and I want to delete it. So I'm um, hovering over the canvas, um, it's going to prompt you with a few options. You can click on the A to edit the text. Um, the double squares is if you wanted to duplicate the item or the little trash can will delete it. You'll also notice on hover that it will list what the um, element is that you're selecting. If you click on that down arrow, it also allows you to um, select the, the parent elements um, for that section. Okay, so going back over to the styles pane, I want to apply some characteristics to this heading element. So with the item selected um, under the style pane, I can give the item a class name like opening heading. I can adjust um, the, the applied styles as in the uh, type, the class, or the ID. 
And then further down the section, um, you'll find that the element uh, properties are divided into three sections. Um, first is the layout, where you can manipulate um, the dimensions um, and the positioning. The design section um, gives you more uh, characteristic features like color. Um, if it's a text element, you can adjust the font um, type, the font size. <clears throat> um, the alignment for font is on the design pane. And you'll find other options such as being able to set um, a background, background images, um, and manipulating borders and corners and such. The third section under the Styles pane is for effects. Here you can adjust um, transitions, you can uh, scale an item, adjust for translate, rotate, and perspective. Finally, the third, a third pane is for the element pane. Here you'll find a, a tree of all of the elements within the project. Hovering over one will um, highlight it on the canvas. You can also use um, search terms if you're trying to find a specific um, class name or element type. I'm going to type in heading and all of the heading elements within the project will appear. This makes it handy so you can find um, something specific really quickly. Now, if you select any of the elements on the canvas, down below you'll see if there's any um, element properties such as um, applying link destinations, uh, as well as uh, a read-only of the CSS. Next, let's review um, the application toolbar. The design for option allows you to set um, support rules for media queries. Very handy if you plan to use um, CSS grid within your project for item positioning. The structured data toolbar icon allows you to add in some uh, SEO markup from Google that helps you um, identify what exactly um, the content is on your, on your page uh, so that Google um, better understands uh, what it is that, um, what it is that you're, you're showing on your website. The toggle breakpoint features is um, pretty handy. So by default, the app is a mobile first workflow which means you'll always build your default style settings um, at the lowest point positioning with the slider to the uh, left of the first breakpoint. These breakpoints are identified as little uh, triangles up in the top. Breakpoints indicate different screen sizes and tells the browser when um, style or layout changes should be made. So with this mobile first workflow, you always start at the lowest point first. Uh, with the toggle breakpoint, you can jump directly to the breakpoints up here. Or if you want to apply styles without having to work in such a narrow spot, when you toggle the breakpoints to disable all breakpoints, um, it allows you to move the slider to any position and then um, adjust and, and tinker with the styles. The next uh, toolbar icon is for themes. Um, from here, you can find um, a range of templates that are already loaded into your um, site designer project. Click on get more themes and it will take you over to our theme shop. The components toolbar icon launches the coffee cup library. Here you'll find um, various pre-generated um, site features and layouts for you to add to your project and then style accordingly. 
These are framework specific, so they will change depending if you're using foundation, materialize, or bootstrap. When you find the one you want, you just click on it and select Add to Project. It will appear in the Components panel um, as shown to you previously. The Resources is where you um, will add in any uh, project files or images uh, that you'd like to load into the application. Click on Add Files and Folders and it will load up your uh, local sources so that you can then choose if you want to add in um, a specific graphic or file. The Pages toolbar icon is where you'll manage the project pages. Under Activate, you can go ahead and select any of the pro pages and it will jump directly to that page. You can also select next or previous page, add new blank pages to the project, or duplicate a page you're currently on. Go to manage project, and here's where you can adjust page names, title, um, and then add in SEO stuff for descriptions and keywords, and access your header and footer. The guides option is pretty handy as it will show you different drop zones within your project. And you can adjust it this way, you know, um, you can kind of get a feel for how everything is set up. Preview is pretty straightforward. It allows you to preview the work right on your canvas. Um, it'll take away that side panel and allow you to uh, move the slider, um, making your project smaller and bigger, so you can test out specific features. Re-click on preview and the canvas will, re -back, will load back um, to its normal state. Device view um, will allow you to test your design on various um, devices like cell phones and iPads. You can also type in custom widths if you want to see something specific that's not already pre-loaded uh, within the program. This feature is also nice because it allows you to rotate so you can see what it would be for uh, not only uh, vertical but horizontal as well. The preview on tool allows you to um, load up the page, allows you to load up the project in any browser you have um, configured within your system. The last set of controls, we have the uh, publish to be able to upload your site to S Drive. If you need to um, host with a third party provider, you'll click on export and that will um, save the project file to your computer as well as generate all of the um, files um, so that you can manually upload. The settings icon allows you to give your project a name, um, select the export structure, and then adjust um, some framework options. You can also manage your coffee cup S drive settings um, from this panel as well. Last but not least, the help dialog um, is really handy because it includes all of the links for video tutorials, the help guide, um, forums. You can also find um, keyboard shortcuts and as, as well as some handy tips. The last thing I wanna discuss is the, um, the utilities here on the left-hand side of the breakpoint bar. I'm going to disable these breakpoints first. Now, as I mentioned, um, the breakpoints serve as um, areas where styles within the page or the layout change for different screen size. If you move your slider, the breakpoint bar will actually um, highlight to indicate where your changes are going to apply. 
So with the slider in this position, I can see that any um, anything that I do to the canvas will apply to screen sizes that are 640 pixels and greater. The pixel size will change on the left as the slider um, gets bigger or goes smaller. You can always click on a breakpoint up at the top to be able to jump right to it. Now, um, these colored breakpoints are ones that are um, set by default within the framework that you've selected. However, what's nice about Site Designer is you can plug in your own. So if you wanna add your own breakpoint, by clicking on this plus arrow, you can add in a custom breakpoint. The minus arrow would take it away. The little icons that you see here um, kind of give you an idea of what type of device would be looking at that, um, looking at your page. So um, with the slider here, I can see that it's probably going to be a large um, iPad um, or maybe a laptop screen uh, as well as uh, larger monitors. The little gear, those little icons will um, highlight and get brighter um, so that you kind of have a, a gauge of, of what you're styling for. The last little utilities is the zoom controls. You can zoom, um, zoom out to see more of your page uh, horizontally and then clicking the little plus magnifying glass um, zooms it back in. The area canvas, you can drag and drop elements around right on the canvas. Just click and drag to move them into a different position. The last thing that I want to touch on in this introduction is um, how you add, um, how you adjust the placement holder text. You can either click on the little A upon hover of the text element. You can also uh, double click and it will automatically launch the text edit mode. And then you can highlight your, um, highlight that placeholder text and replace it with um, your own custom, custom text. If you want them to have special styles, you can give it a class name here on the text edit mode and it will apply only to that specific element. It's, it won't change the styles for anything else within the page. Well, I hope that this introduction uh, is helpful for you. Uh, be sure to check out more video tutorials and helpful information within the help guide. You have a great day.